Excellent. Thank you, Gareth. And thank you, Ron. Um, my name is Lucia Stanham. I uh, look at our Azure marketing specifically for healthcare, um, and it's a pleasure to kick off this day with you guys. In this first session, I will briefly start by introducing Microsoft and our role in the healthcare ecosystem. Um, and then Gareth will take it away with one of our most exciting offerings to date, the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. So Gareth, next slide, please. So at Microsoft, our mission as a company is to empower every organization on the planet to achieve more. This is a mission that is the North Star of every customer engagement every partner conversation, and every piece of technology we design. And today, you'll be learning a lot about different technologies that we offer in the Microsoft portfolio and how they have been used as critical parts of the digital transformation journeys for customers and how that ultimately empowers them to unlock new value, especially in healthcare. Next slide, please. But it's important first to ground ourselves before we start talking about technology in a critical element of digital transformation. Technology isn't an end in and of itself. We've worked with thousands of organizations on their journeys of digital transformation. And what we've learned from the most successful ones is that sometimes the most important work happens up front um, with aligning first at a corporate level, a company's vision, their culture, their potential, and their capabilities to then understand where technology can fit in and helping them unlock that greater value. Next slide, please. So let's dive into healthcare. And it's important, I think, first of all, to acknowledge in a similar way to how we've we've already been doing so far, the enormous pressures that the healthcare industry is currently facing at the moment. And we see these as falling into one of two buckets. We see short-term pressures as well as ongoing longer-term pressures as well. In the short-term side, we've seen unprecedented disruptions from COVID-19. We've seen squeezing health incomes from declining elective procedures increasing expenditures from unforeseen COVID expenses, as well as the threat of depleted reserves for providers. We're also seeing system-wide disruptions with layoffs and reassignments and pay cuts and pressures from health leaders to already start thinking about how to transition from managing a crisis to managing a transition back to a restored future and whatever that will look like with all the associated impacts on employees, on operations, and on their supply chains. Now in the long-term realm, we also see a backdrop that has been looming in the healthcare industry and is top of mind for, for the health ecosystem as well. Digital transformation has been increasing consumer expectations across every single industry, and healthcare is no exception, with patients expecting a more personalized, proactive, and intelligent experience at every touch point, whether it's with their health provider or with their insurer, or if they're part of a clinical trial, expectations are rising. The industry is also deeply concerned at the same time with um, like very expensive breaches uh, in security and privacy, and they're under growing pressures to raise the bar constantly in terms of their, um, their security and their compliance with evolving regulations that govern how sensitive health data is stored, collected, and shared electronically as well. We're also seeing providers face challenges in, the, in unlocking data for transitioning to value-based healthcare models. And finally, in the midst of aging populations and the growing prevalence of chronic diseases and the changing nature of healthcare as well, in what seems like the worst possible time, we're also facing a global shortage of healthcare workers as well. So in this backdrop, what we're seeing is that digital transformation is an undercurrent that emerges to help organizations begin to navigate some of these challenges. And um, it's interesting that we had the poll recently um, at the end of the, the previous session. One of the things that we have found in the conversations that we've been having in particular is that 
COVID-19 in particular in the short-term challenges have really helped accelerate some of the conversations that we've been having with customers around digital transformation. Next slide, please. So a common variant that you'll see across digital transformation and across all the scenarios we'll talk about today is this theme of enabling a digital feedback loop in an organization. Now, digital transformation really comes to life when organizations can unlock the power of data in their organization. And moreover, the insights that come from synthesizing and analyzing data and helping that to inform action in an organization, as well as by connecting systems that may have historically not talked to each other, especially systems that govern interactions with patients, care teams, medical products, um, and operations. Um, Next slide, please. Now, as we look across the healthcare ecosystem, Microsoft takes a, an end-to-end -end view at the different stakeholders that coexist. We not only look at healthcare providers and clinical facilities, but we also look at the payer networks as well. We look at scenarios in the patient's home or in their residence as well. We look at scenarios that are top of mind for pharmaceuticals and life science organizations working on clinical trials and at the forefront of genomics. And we also look very closely at manufacturing and the supply chain organizations that work with them in building and distributing medical equipment. Next slide, please. And we're very excited as we look across the breadth of this ecosystem to work with leaders in every single one of these categories, both in the US and around the world. Next slide, please. And hand in hand with working with these extraordinary customers is also working with an extraordinarily rich and growing partner ecosystem, many of whom are here today, in fact, um, that bring critical expertise in designing and bringing to market modern applications for healthcare as well. Now, both partners and customers are critical counterparts in our journeys. Um, they help us stay up to date in understanding what the most recent use cases are for technologies, where their needs are, and are critical for helping us design and continuously improve our services. Next slide, please. We've been very excited as well to receive industry recognition from leading analysts for the value that some of our services have been able to provide. Most recently, as you'll see here, um, by being named the leader for AI services for healthcare IT by Frost and Sullivan in their uh, Frost Radar report earlier this year, which recognized not only Microsoft in the top quadrant, but also a number of our partners too that you'll be hearing about today. This is a journey that we're very excited to walk on together with our partners. So we're excited to keep to share with you some of the latest innovations that we've been seeing and to unlock the next generation of innovative technologies. And hopefully we can join you on that journey as well. With that, I will pass the torch to Gareth to kick off the day with the Microsoft Cloud for Health. Thank you, Lucia. Um... So um, morning, uh, afternoon, everybody. So I'm, as mentioned earlier, so I'm on the worldwide health team at Microsoft and I'm the chief of staff of the team. Um, I've only actually worked for two places. One was the National Health Service in the UK for nine years and then 18 years at Microsoft, um, watching us do um, various different ways of thinking about the healthcare industry. Um, and the, the good thing is for the last three or four years, I think we've got the right approach and, and customers and partners that we talk to um, usually agree with us so i'd love to get your feedback as we as we talk you through this so so lucy, lucy had talked about kind of the the industry trends the, the way we're seeing it and frankly we we think we have a responsibility as a global healthcare as a global cloud provider to help healthcare deal with some of those trends and some of those challenges which is why people like frost and sullivan are saying that that we're onto something we've got the right approach here um what that means is um for the first time ever, we now have, and we we've, we announced it a few months ago, and, and we've announced, uh, I think, two weeks ago that, that it's going generally available in the, in the next, uh, at the end of October, so October the 30th, we've announced this thing called the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. 
And the, I think it's really important. The tagline is actually a really important tagline. It's absolutely about how do we bring together a set of capabilities from Microsoft that help you as customers and partners deliver better experiences, better insights, and better care. And it's really important. This is about you delivering new services, whether you're a healthcare provider or a life science or a med tech company or you're a partner or a services organization that helps those, those, those customers. We, we don't want to be that. We would be we would not be very good at being any of those those um, types of organisations. But we do think we have a responsibility to make our cloud capabilities healthcare relevant, healthcare compliant, understand healthcare data sets and data types. And you're going to hear more about that later from Doug. <clears throat> and then to enable some workflows that every customer talks to us about to be simpler and easier to transform. So with that, this is what it's all about. Um, so the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. In the first version that we'll ship in the next uh, well, first of October, so the next 29 days, <coughs> excuse me, is about focusing on the, the four areas you can see here. So how do we help organizations enhance their patient engagement? How do we help them empower their, their team collaboration? Um, we know that healthcare is all about multidisciplinary teams and uh, increasingly complex organization. Thirdly, how do you use data to drive clinical and operational outcome improvements? We know that healthcare is not short of data. We know that it's been pretty hard to connect that data um, and drive um, outcomes and improvements with it. And then the fourth area is around security, privacy, compliance. We take that responsibility very seriously, um, from a, both from a performance, from security, from legislation, from from open standards. And Doug's going to talk a lot later about kind of HL7 Fire and how we we are not we are fully committed to the industry standard data types and uh, rather than trying to create our own versions of these things. We think that when you put these things together, it's actually a really interesting um, set of capabilities that our customers, frankly, have been asking for. So what does that actually mean? What does this thing do? So the best way of thinking about this is um, there are nine outer circles here. These are the kind of workflows and capability areas that our customers, mostly in provider, I'll be honest, for, for V1, we have a heavy provider focus. And we, we made that decision based on kind of industry trends, capabilities that we already had, and frankly, the COVID um, uh crisis over the last six months that, that that was the first place to focus but over time you will see these circles grow to encompass more in the payer and healthcare insurance and government market and also into life sciences and med tech um, and then also finally into the into retail health and re retail pharmacy um, but for the current version it is heavily focused on on these nine capabilities and what I usually get when if we were face to face in a room and we could you could actually ask questions and we could talk about this without me having to just sort of talk into the ether, we usually get. So what does that actually mean? How much of these capabilities is Microsoft going to deliver on its own? And in general, and I'll give you a couple of the exceptions in a minute. In general, most of these capabilities are Microsoft healthcare cloud platform combined with partner solutions that you're already using or buying or looking at or have built yourself actually as a customer. And we, we have an amazing set of capabilities that our customers build using tools on platforms just themselves with our partners. Most of these are still absolutely partner led. There are a couple of areas where we go a little bit higher up the stack. So for example, with care team collaboration, if you think about the way Microsoft Teams is being used across healthcare today, we've got millions and millions of clinicians and administrators using Using teams just to talk to each other. How do you build a multidisciplinary team? How do you how do you enable conversations to happen across that complicated healthcare ecosystem with with caregivers and administrators and and uh, all of the other people that get involved in in complicated care? We actually do quite a lot out of the box. We always have done. Everyone everyone knows that that Microsoft Office and Teams <coughs> are solutions that tend to do quite a lot of the of the job um, by themselves. Um, but in most of the other areas, and in fact, the vast majority of the other areas, this is about building a set of compliant and secure capabilities at the platform level that you and our partners can take advantage of. So, for example, operation analytics. Yes, we're going to make sure that it is it is help our tools and capabilities are quicker and easier for you to use to connect your data. But you're then going to do your own work on top of that around what analytics and what because um, uh, it's what we found is that it's broadly different per organization. So 
every customer says we want to get more data, more insights out of our analytics, both clinically or operationally. Um, but it's so hard to get to the point where the data is in a state where you can actually start to drive that value. We think we have that responsibility to help you get the data to a state where you can actually do something with it, um, and then you can then accelerate that use. So let's talk about really quickly what what are those what are those circles? So in the better care circle, we're all about care team collaboration, which I've talked about. Um, we're about care coordination and ensuring that that data is connected behind the scenes uh, around the patient. Um, how do you connect devices in and clinic uh, internet of medical things into that experience so that as you're doing as you're doing care coordination you also get a um not, not just human entered data you start to get the the device entered data which obviously is pretty prevalent in health but it's been relatively tricky to connect it into the overall system we're going to help with that data interoperability and, and operation analytics and clinical analytics i talked about earlier how do you connect the data make it more usable more standard um, and more available where where um, permissions are are right and then expose it to the uh, the insights and the analysts and the clinicians that you have in your organizations to answer the questions they need to do to change and drive their pro their process and improve care. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, hang on a second. Yeah, West Coast uh, smoke is hitting Seattle again. Um, and then finally, in the better experiences area, virtual health, patient insights and personalized care. This is all about how do we find new ways of helping you, our customers, deliver new ways of, of of delivering healthcare to your patients and your consumers everything from um connecting that data again for a great uh, patient experience we all know we've all been patients we all know that frankly as a patient we are often the integrator of data and we have to connect and, and drive that personalized experience that seems odd healthcare should be able to do that for the patient so how can we help you do that and then how in and how can we then help you as a customer use that data to apply intelligence so that you deliver different uh, health promotion messages, for example, for different cohorts of patients um, by obviously understanding both personalized requirements and patient insights. And then you can't talk about healthcare today without talking about virtual health. Um, we think there is a real need for some standardization and some simplification of delivering the platform that enable virtual health. And so we're investing heavily in, in create, making sure that our tools are relevant in the virtual health space. So, for example, if you want to deliver um, virtual visits, we now have some capabilities in Microsoft Teams that take a horizontal healthcare, sorry, a horizontal uh, collaboration and um virtual conversation tool like teams and make it relevant in healthcare so kind of waiting rooms and patient identification and anonymity and all all that sort of stuff you would need to use those tools in those environments we've built and the reason i the reason i end on that one is um I, I guess i want to be really clear microsoft is now and has been for the last two or three years and is increasingly investing in these capabilities um we've had we've had lots of attempts at doing things in healthcare we've had kind of free accelerators and things that make our tools more useful in the industry this is the first time with the microsoft cloud for healthcare where all of those things are now built in core engineering they're fully supported you get the full length of cloud of roadmap and um support levels and all all those sort of things that that our customers have been asking us for when we create this this healthcare relevant content and approach to make it make sure that, it, that, that they can rely on it and trust it uh, and that's exactly what we what we're delivering here so if you think about it uh, at a really simple level microsoft has all these amazing cloud capabilities that are relevant to all industries what the microsoft cloud for healthcare does is sits on top of those capabilities connects them together and connects them together in a healthcare relevant set of use cases which you can see here so let's move on so um <laughs> I think this, this is a really interesting slide. We, when we announced the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare in May, um, some of the questions we got from journalists were, why would you announce this thing right in the middle of this pandemic? And actually, it's exact, that's exactly why we announced it. We actually, like behind the scenes, we actually accelerated and uh, invested more in, in getting this thing ready and getting it ready to uh, and getting it ready to be released and used by by our customers quickly for the re because of uh, the COVID pandemic and frankly the impact we saw on our <clears throat> on our 
particularly provider organizations around the world. Um, so, for example, CDC, when you, if you go to CDC and do the uh, COVID self-assessment bot, that's actually running on the Microsoft Healthcare bot, which is a part of the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. St. Luke's University uses uh, virtual visits for its uh, secure uh, conversations and for virtual visits for, for their patients to obviously reduce physical exposure during COVID. That's running on the Teams virtual visits, which is a core capability I've just talked about as part of the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. And then Swedish Hospital, which I'm sure you know, but is not in Sweden, it's in Seattle, um, uh, uses a bunch of our connected power platform capabilities in a healthcare context to think about running and improving their operational <clears throat> excuse me, agility and um, connecting dots inside their organization so that they could respond to the crisis more simply or, uh, sorry, more effectively and more quickly. That's why the cloud, Microsoft Cloud Healthcare exists. It's about bringing all of these things together, which is what we can now do. So it wouldn't be great if you could build a triage system using the bot that then transferred people into a virtual health or a telehealth environment. And as a result of that was supplying data out and, and instrumentation out of that experience to enable your organization to dynamically allocate people, resources, think about your, your uh, resource management during either a crisis or, or just a normal day job. If all of that stuff was connected together, it's a way more powerful way of delivering healthcare and, and understanding what's going on behind the scenes and inside your organization. It's exactly what the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare does. So how does it work? Um, that's the other question everyone says. Okay, so what, what actually does this thing do? And I thought that this might be a helpful set of um, uh, uh, images to help you understand. So we, we are building on top of our health, uh, I'm sorry, on top of our normal Microsoft Cloud capabilities, <clears throat> excuse me, a bunch of engineering configurations that make them more relevant for healthcare. So for example, the, uh, the Teams virtual visits I talked about, which was take Teams, think about a use case for it in virtual visits in healthcare and change the product, to be very clear, add, add new capabilities to the product to make it relevant in, in healthcare. IoT, how do, we, how do we think about making sure that our, our, our IoT capabilities understand the difference between kind of commercial IoT use cases and healthcare, internet and medical things use cases? We will build and manage and support those engineering configurations. On top of that, you then layer in healthcare data models. Um, we want to get to the point where there is <laughs> hopefully one, but certainly fewer common data models across healthcare. We know that every customer is, is trying to do it. We know that everyone is, it's kind of the, the, the golden or the, the, the silver bullet for everyone connecting all their data. <clears throat> we know it's hard, but we, again, we think we have a responsibility to try and enable you to do that as much as possible by providing common data models and capabilities that are healthcare uh, contextually aware. Top of that, you then get Microsoft apps and services in some areas. So the healthcare bot that I talked about um, with CDC, that's a Microsoft service that we built because it, it was requested by customers and, and is taken by customers and partners and used in, in a way. The Microsoft Teams vi virtual visits is a Microsoft app used in, in that experience. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on top of that, the partner solutions, which take everything I've just talked about and customize them, extend them, make them more relevant for you, connect them into interesting new areas to open up new scenarios that, that, that we hadn't thought about. Um, but when you put it all together, it's about delivering those better experiences, those better insights um, and better care. So I know we're running a little ahead of schedule because, and I think we started, um, <laughs> we started a little early as well, but I wanted to just sort of make sure you have uh, access to the information. So it's currently in public review and you can, you can get access to it today. We have announced that it will be generally available um, from October the 30th, so 29 days. And if you want more information, you can go to the pretty simple URL, microsoft.com slash health. And those, all of those capabilities that I've just talked about become, become available as a fully supported product on, on October the 30th. So, Ron, we're a bit early. Sorry. <laughs> That's a rare thing to say. Uh, I don't think there's anything to apologize for. You know, Gareth, when I was listening to your comments, I suddenly had a great like, swelling of optimism about the future. And too <laughs> often, if you read all about going on in COVID and whatnot and the um, 
any of the media, it's easy to be discouraged. That's another reason why I'm glad I recorded this, because if I ever get discouraged about what's going on, I can play this video and it'll give me renewed optimism as to what the future will hold in healthcare, which obviously affects our everyone. So, so it, I thought, I'm sorry for the messy background everywhere. I, I, like you were saying, Ron, you either had my kids eating breakfast and, around me or you had a messy background. So I went for messy background. Um, I think that optimism is a really important point. Look, I'm a healthcare guy. I mean, I'm, I'm in healthcare 26 or seven years as a customer and as a Microsoft um, employee trying to get Microsoft to do the right thing around healthcare. We're doing the right thing. Every customer and every partner says to us, help us connect our data so we can do something useful with it. All right. That's a reasonable request. We, we should do that. And, I, and I, I, I genuinely, we sit in all these meetings. We, are, we're, we have industry experts. We have leaders in the team. We have a bunch of people who really understand the healthcare industry. And our product teams and our engineering teams and our strategy teams are listening and are doing the right thing. It's, it's cool. It's really cool. It's going to take time. It's always going to take. We're a big ship. Healthcare is a big ship. Um, but I think, and then, I mean, let's put it this way: two years ago, we didn't have a Lucy. We didn't have. There was there is whole teams of people who are saying, "What could what could Microsoft do to help our customers and partners transform in the way that they've wanted to do? What can we get out of the way? Can we help you connect your data in an industry standard way so you can do amazing things with it? Yes, we should. Can we use our capabilities? Teams has got, I don't know, whatever whatever the number is, hundreds of millions of people using it for, for talking to each other outside of healthcare. Can, can we tweak it and make it more relevant for clinicians to use? Yes. Should we? Yes. Um, so, yeah, sorry. I, I, thank you for your optimism. I, I'm, I've been here a long time. I am so much more optimistic about what we're doing and, and that it's the right thing with the industry. It's not to the industry. It's with the industry.